If a patient presents with an anterior rotation of the anominate, then typically it's more so on the right side in roughly 80% of the population. However, it can be naturally left side on 20%, yeah, give or take. So just for the demonstration, I'm just going to, to use the left side, um, even though it's probably more common to find it on the right side. Now, imagine that this side has gone forward, so the goal is to bring it back. The ASIS will be inferior as compared to the opposite side. The PSIS will be superior as compared to the opposite side. And the leg length will appear to be a little longer. Okay, so it's an apparent leg length rather than a true leg length discrepancy. So my goal is to bring this posterior. Have a look at the rectus femoris as well, because rectus femoris, where it attaches onto the AIS, could actually pull it anteriorly. So if you correct the articular restriction, you might want to look at the myofascial restriction as well. Okay, so that's why I suggest you look at A, but you also look at B as well. Because if the rectus femoris is tight, you correct, but the muscle still pulls. Okay, so maybe do like a simple MET for that muscle. The way we do this one, it's quite an easy technique. Oop, crack it was noisy, my couch. So we bring the knee up like this, and I'm going to bring him towards me like that. Place their knee on top of your hip, so that's where we are. This hand onto the ASIS, this hand onto the PSIS, because what you're going to do is feel where the movement starts to rotate. And if you look at the pelvis here, you can see it starts to rotate there, just, just there. So that's where you would almost like stop. Hand onto the ASIS from here, and you cradle over and then you're going to use the arm like this. You can use this hand as well to rotate. Okay, or you can just use one arm and palpate. It's an MET, so a muscle energy technique. My patient's going to push me away for 10 seconds. So he's activating the hip extensors, the glutes and the hamstring. And after the 10 seconds, relax. So the muscles now relax through post isometric relaxation. And after the 10 seconds, I'm going to then cradle here or palpate and literally bring him posteriorly whilst I'm still flexing his hip. So it's not just flexion of the hip. You have to try to bring his pelvis posteriorly. And you hold him for a few seconds and then you would repeat two or three times. So from here, you push again, please. So he is hip extending, 10 seconds, palpate if you want to. And after the 10 seconds, relax and then I can bring him and mobilize coming through. I also do something called like, I call it an, an encouragement technique. It is a sort of like a thrust. There's no typical cavitation from here, but as I'm coming around, I will just literally just encourage the position from there. And again, I normally do that say three or four times. And that's one of my most effective ways of correcting an anterior rotation. There is a slight variation from this if you place their leg around you, so it's like a wraparound technique from here, because they might have like a knee issue, meniscal issue, so they can literally just push their hip against you, so you push, so there's no weight you have to hold, and the technique is exactly the same. So from here, you literally just take them into flexion, hand onto the pelvis, and then you are rotating whilst encouraging flexion. You don't need to have a hand there, I can leave it go, and I can come round and mobilize it through here, okay? So you either got the knee bent in flexion, you know, or the leg is wrapped around you. And these are the, the two best ways of correcting a simple anterior rotation.